Welcome to Music Made in Texas. Get an inside look into the lives of singers, songwriters, and musicians who call Texas home. One of the best guitar players from Texas, Kirk McKinn, has been influenced by several well-known musicians. Now that Kirk is in a band with one of his favorites, he's influencing a whole new generation of guitar players. started playing guitar well we had to kind of go back uh we had a lot of you know my brother listened to a lot of jeff beck in the house and stuff like that jeff beck and billy gibbons and and um it was funny one day my parents left and like my brother had all his friends there and they had electric guitars none of them could really play but they had a uh, i guess what is a 38 millimeter camera 35 millimeter camera mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. with the whatever and uh they did like a music video in, in his room and they put like Playboy centerfolds on the wall <laughs> and they were like mi uh, mimicking, like uh, lip syncing to uh, back in the USSR. And I was just like, wow, I was like, wow man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Cause, you know, cause it just kind of like, I was like, wow man, that's cool. You know, cause I've never really even thought about playing or anything like that. I would say probably uh, when I started out, it was more like Alex Lifes and, and uh, you know, um, Eddie Van Halen and Pat Travers, uh, Angus Young, you know, Billy Gibbons. And then I, I, when I went to Austin, it was Eric Johnson. who just was like, that like totally blew me away, you know. I had a little band with some guys and we'd play around like backyard parties for beer, you know, basically. And I think the first paying gig in Austin, I played with a three-piece, and each of us, it, we made nine dollars at the door, so each of us got three dollars. So, yeah. <laughs> Austin, I was kind of pursuing all these other things, like at college, you know, it's like uh, going to be a fine art major and stuff, and I saw where all my friends were graduating, and they weren't really... Um, doing anything with it. They were like going to work like at the IRS or the state capitol and stuff. And it was all the guys that I played with and stuff. So I was like, man, I, got, I really want to play music. And so I started putting ads out and I was like going to Dallas and playing with some people. And then I moved to LA and started playing with some people there and got out and really started playing around and really kind of dug back into like blues music and I saw Albert Collins play, and I just kind of went, man, I need to get back into this, because I kind of got lost in the 80s a little bit. You know, there was like so many weird things going on, and everybody was shredding, and I was just like, man, I was like, they all sounded the same to me. You were there, you heard it, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I mean, they're great, you know, but now I look back and I go, wow, it was really cool, but at the time I was like, man, I don't want to do that, you know? Well, he was a big influence, like, I didn't know anything about him, but like, I had a Hit Parader magazine, and it had a picture of him in there. I was like, who's this guy? And my brother was like, man, you gotta hear that stuff. And he brought home, uh, from college, he brought home Putting It Straight and Heat in the Street. And we were kids, you know, me and my buddies, and we'd be sitting in the back of his car, and he'd have Heat in the Street blasting, like, like eight track, or, you know, or whatever cassette. I think it was cassette, and that was like really cool for the time. And and we were like, I mean, we were just like, I mean, branded. Yeah, I, when I got hooked up with Pat Travers, I I had met his rhythm section and had a band with him in Florida, and we were gigging around Orlando, you know, Cocoa Beach, Daytona Beach, and all that stuff. And um, it was really cool. He, he he walked into the rehearsal room, and. Uh, he was drinking at the time. I mean, he's not, he's completely sober now, but he walked up to me and gave me a bottle of rum and I took a swig and stuff. It was like, it was like very cool. And we jammed on a, a song idea of his and and it actually ended up like on a record like later on and stuff. And he was totally cool, man. 
it was loud. <laughs> I'll say that, you know. And he had said, he could talk to me the next day and said, if I ever hire another guitar player, I'll give you a call. And I was like, yeah, and I'm going to hold my breath, you know. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, uh, it happened, you know, so. And uh, we rehearsed a couple of days and went out and played a gig in Winter Park. And then we ended up, like, going on the road and uh, doing, like, the the snow tour, you know, up in the north. <laughs> you know, we did all this, these dates in you know, Winnebago. It was, it was fun. We played a gig, uh, a real, it was like a street in Melbourne, Florida, and it kept raining. And we were, we'd were we set up, it start raining, we had to pull back, wait for the rain to stop. But I remember that gig, I mean, it was like all, you know, just humid, and but man, the street was like packed. It was like 5,000 people screaming, going nuts, like packed in like sardines. And uh, man, I, I remember I looked over at the very end when we were finishing, you know, because it's just a real, you know, thing going on. I remember looking over and seeing Pat and thinking, I was like, oh, I can't believe I'm on stage with this guy, man, because he's just—it was—it was electric. I mean, I was like, going, okay, that's it. That's that's what it, you know. I mean, he was like lighting up. It was like lightning bolts shooting off of him and stuff. That was really cool. <laughs> You know, it was like, it was, I don't know, it was just something about it. It was like awesome. Wow, I'm on stage with this guy. And I used to listen to him, you know, years ago. Um, I, man, I work on, like, ideas, like, all the time. I have, like, you know, can fill this whole room up, you know, with stuff. It's just, like, you know, CDs of stuff and... You know, you go back and you listen, you go, that's good, I can use that, I can redo that, or whatever. And, and then some of them, you're just like, oh, delete, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, I do it all the time. I mean, I've got a ton of stuff, you know, sitting in the in the bin. Like, when it becomes too much of a job, and then it's basically, it gets to a point where you're just doing it as a job. And you're like, it's like going and punching a clock. And the fun is taken out like when you used to play in your bedroom <laughs> or whatever, you know, or, you know, just to jam with your friends or whatever. I think it's a balance, you know. Yes, it is a job, but you want to keep that element of fun in it. And that's what, you know, that's what makes you, made you passionate about it in the first place because you, you liked the way it felt, you know. And I would say that. I would say that when it gets to be like a really like a chore and it's like killing you and you like hate it, you need to step away from it because you're going to end up being bitter about music, you know. I think it's a, I mean, I, I see myself doing it for a long time. I mean, I really don't see myself stopping. I think there's a lot of, um, I mean, it's like what we do is kind of unique. Um, and a lot of times people don't hear this kind of stuff, you know, and I, and now I think that, like music is kind of opening up, you know, being that the the, uh, the big corporate giants are you know dying, you know, and I think that it's it's exciting it's exciting still to me now. It's even more exciting now. It's actually like wow, we went through this whole phase where you could never get like a deal or anything, and like now you can do like a record like in your house, and it sounds great, you know, and that to, that's like and now it's like oh wow, you know. We don't have that excuse anymore, you know, <laughs> we got to actually do something, you know, that sort of thing. But um, that's what makes it exciting to me now. It's, we're living in a really exciting time for music, I think, you know, and uh, you can do anything, you really can't.